Uh, this talk has the distinction of being the ugliest presentation here, as well as the most bleeding edge. And um, I will forewarn you that there are no basics in this talk. So we're just going to go through a refresher, and then we're going to jump straight into descriptor indexing, um, because that's how exciting it is. Uh, but the real reason is that it would probably take two hours to go through the full talk, and we had to cut some stuff. Um, and the other thing is that the subtitle to this talk should be descriptor indexing. Here's all the words that you know in English. Here's what they mean in Vulcan. Um, so there's a lot of overloaded words. Uh, so feel free to ask me what they mean specific to descriptor indexing at the end of the talk. And here's what we're going to cover. We'll do a brief overview of what the extension brings. Um, we'll do a rush descriptors refresher. Um, then we'll go into descriptor, some of the particulars in descriptor indexing, the highlights. Uh, and then we'll talk about more about unbounded and, uh, and then about non-uniform indexing. So uh, a little history of why this extension came about is um, if you ask somebody like Tiago, you know, like how many resources do you want to bind at one time, they'll tell you all of them. Um, and that means that there's a lot of bindings that we need to access during shader runtime. Uh, and so through a lot of uh, back and forth in the Kronos group, we finally came up with something that matches what you're pretty familiar with in DX. Uh, and so what descriptor indexing brings is it brings two, two features to Vulkan. The first one is to have extremely large sets uh, and, or unbounded in DX talk. And the next one is, uh, and it's orders of magnitude larger, like crazy large. Uh, and the next, the one after that is uh, dynamic non-uniform resource indexing. Uh, and this is mostly to make non-uniform resource index um, possible in HLSL. Um, I don't know if you guys are using that yet, but it's been highly requested and it's, uh, it looks like it's an awesome feature. I get to write a lot of test code for it. And so I know what it does. Um, so descriptor indexing is an EXT extension. And EXT means that the IHVs are not required to implement this. But all the desktop IHVs have it. And um, I believe NVIDIA has it in their public driver now as of uh, 3.97 or 3.9740. And AMD and Intel, it's coming soon. So I, that should be out hopefully soon. Um, so uh, EXT extensions may or may not become a part of the core. Uh, and what, we're, what we do with these extensions is that we put them out so people can test them, use them, see how they apply to their, to their app slash engine design, and then provide us feedback. And, and your feedback definitely uh, helps shape how this extension um, will become once it, you know, if it becomes part of the core or a KHR extension. And if it becomes a KHR extension, that means it's available all across the board. Okay, so descriptors refresher. Um, so descriptors in Vulkan have both a, or the descriptor counts that's available, have both a, a per stage and a per set limit. We're going to focus on the per set limit in, in this talk. Uh, and descriptors are essentially collections of bindings described by set layouts. So, you know, in your shaders, you have a bunch of resources, um, textures, buffers, samples, et cetera. They're collected into a layout, and this layout determines what the set looks like. Uh, and allocation descriptors are, descriptor sets are allocated against pools. Um, pools have both a max set and a count limitation. Um, and as far as updating goes, descriptors, uh, updates happen outside of the command. Right now, updates must happen outside of the command record and execution. And you, you can update the descriptors in bulk, but they're specified individually. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit in just a minute. And the shader binding. So each descriptor binding maps to a single resource binding in the shader, including arrays. And this is slightly different from DX, and it's a little confusing if you look at the Spear V. Um, like the first time I looked at it, I freaked out. OK, so updating. Um, here's, here's what's possible now. Um, so you can, you can update as, as long as you're not in executable state. And executable state means that you are uh, the, uh, the state isn't pending. And pending means that the GPU might be working on it. And that was confusing to me when I first heard it too. But essentially, if you're, once, you've, once you've bound the descriptor set inside the command buffer, you can't touch it. Um, and if you do touch it, the behavior is undefined. Uh, and the, the two places that people often want to touch it are before it goes into queue submit and right after. Uh, you don't, you're not really sure what happens there. Um, but once, you know, once you're sure that, that the, the command has been processed, then you can start updating it again. And the next thing is arrayness. So here's, here's a very simple shader. Um, and it, uh, you know, it, it has a, an array of textures of 10. Um, 
And so it starts at T1 and it goes for 10. So T1 uh, to zero, T10. And the, if you look at the, the FXT generation, um, it, it, creates 10, it creates all 10 registers. But in Vulkan, it only creates uh, one binding with an array of 10. And so if, you, if you're debugging and you have to go to the speed review level, you don't freak out, it's there. The array, the array, be, array behavior is exactly the same. Um, okay, so sorry, I just covered this. All right, so description index and basics. All right, so applications can create much larger sets um, with uh, VKXT descriptor indexing. Um, shaders can index descriptors using uh, dynamic non-uniform. Um, you can query uh, you can query with the limits by using this struct uh, in the when you're doing the uh, the get physical device properties, and you can also uh, query the the features, and you can toggle using. I'm sorry, these structs are incredibly long, and I can't even, I can't even say them properly. Um, so I'm not gonna try. <laughs> uh, thank you, <laughs> spec writers. Uh, but essentially, these two right here, you pass them into either, this one to create device, and this one into get physical properties, and it tells you, or features, and it tells you what the device is capable of. Um, so the other thing was, I, I started to write out code snippets that I can show you guys, and by the time I got to the second slide, it was like four pages of code to get this thing set up. And so what, we'll, what I'll do is I'll write a sample, post it somewhere, and then tweet, uh, you know, get at API Vulcan to tweet it out so that people can see it. Um, because I'm, I'm sure you don't want to hear me talk about eight pages of code. Um, I also don't want to talk about eight pages of code. Um, so you will, um, it will require the uh, SDK 1.173, uh, and your driver has to support uh, VK EXT descriptor indexing. And as far as compiler support goes, uh, DXT supports this now uh, for HLSL, and um, GLSlang and Shader C support for GLSL. Um, I think, I'm not sure if GL, uh, GLSlang is planning to add it or not. Um, you can acquire that from the, uh, the GitHub issue. Hi, I've got one, one question already. Yes. C can you define the phrase dynamic non-uniform? Yes, I can. <laughs> um, that's probably a typo. I should have probably just typed non-uniform, but uh, dynamic non-uniform just means that um, it, it, uh, the each invocation of the lane, going back to Daniel's talk, can be arbitrary. So when it's when it's dynamic uniform, all the the value is the same across all the invocations. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so that's what I meant by these words are overloaded. Okay. Um, all right, so descriptor indexing, the limits and organization change just a bit. You get, um, the, there are still limits imposed by the driver, they're just ridiculously big. And the minimum limit per, uh, per set in the spec is 500,000. Uh, and so that means that you can, you can reference up to 500,000 resources inside your shader. Uh, whether that's a good idea or not, we'll leave that up to the designers. And here's, uh, here's how much they increase for certain IHVs. Uh, I wasn't sure if I could quote names, so I anonymized them a little bit. So the, the first IHV, um, uh, the sample images went from 90,000 to a million, and this, the samplers went from 4,000 uh, 4, to a million, the, and storage buffers went from 90,000 to a million as well. And on this other IHV, if you're familiar with this, you probably know who this is, it was uh, four, it's a few thousand shy of four billion, and it went to the full you know, two to the 32nd minus one, so you went max is the limit. And the other thing about um, the arrays at the shader level is that they can be unbounded. So if you're looking at this, if you're looking at this extension in the spec, it won't use the, it won't use unbounded except for maybe one or two sentences. Variable size or variable count is what the the Vulcan version of this is called. Um, and uh, the the with even though you activate this extension, you don't automatically get not all things are unbounded. Um, you have to tell it that hey, I want this binding to be unbounded. And we'll get into the specifics of uh, more of this uh, in just a little bit. And, but uh, as far as updating goes, a few things have changed. Uh, so you can now update after you bind the command buffer. Um, and the command buffer will use the most recent, uh, the most recent versions of what you updated with. Uh, you can also update uh, in any command buffer that is in pending state. That means it's executed on the GPU as long as that descriptor is not in use. Um, there is a quite a bit of setup, uh, which is 
hopefully will be demonstrated to the code. I won't walk you through that, but it, it's about a page of code. Um, not to say that you know this should <laughs> you know deter you from using Vulkan because it's equally as long in, in DirectX as well. Um, so uh, the other thing about um, being able to bind, um, sorry, to update after binding is that your your set your bindings your sets and your pools have to be created with a special flag. Um, and but if you're just using update while pending, then it's just one flag. Uh, and you can just, you do that during the descriptive creation time. And so here's what the, the new version of updating looks like. And obviously you can update after you bound, and you can update uh, you know even after you submit, as long as you're you know that the the descriptors are not in use. All right. Um, so we talked about being able to update descriptors while they're not in use. And so here's here's a more specific example of it. So let's say you have a, a, a reference in a shader that has 65,000 entries or 65K entries. Uh, and there's, uh, there's 81, there's 8K objects and each one of them references eight textures. So your bound is um, open-ended on the upper. So it's, uh, it's object ID times eight and object ID times eight plus eight. Um, so each object would reference a texture, one of the eight textures in this range. Um, so, and the way that this, you know, this hypothetical engine happens to work is that everything is deferred until it comes in the scene. So as you're moving throughout the level, things get loaded and, um, you know, your PSOs are created, your descriptors, your, your descriptors are created, et cetera. Um, and so the, so the set, so that this particular binding is, is always partially populated until you've seen everything at least one time. Um, and so this is, this is all okay now, whereas before, if you try to do this, either validation will give you a warning or you'll just crash or the driver will do something completely funny. Um, but there is a flag that you need to put when you're creating the descriptor binding and uh, you want to tell it, hey, this, this descriptor binding, I want it to be partially bound. Um, all right, so on unbounded. So a quick recap from earlier, uh, the, the variables, it's, again, we call it variable size in, in Vulkan. Uh, and it requires this really long flag to make it uh, work, and I hope you have autocomplete on in the uh, in your IDE. <laughs> um, I just copy paste from the spec. Um, and so the other thing to note is that uh, you know there's still limits that you still have to specify the pull the the pull count, but the descriptor count becomes the 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 upper bound of what bindings are possible. Um, and I haven't tried creating four gigs worth uh, or four billion descriptors. And I'm not entirely sure what will happen if you tried that, um, but the, the minimum definitely works. Uh, so the other thing is that the, there's a slight restriction on which, which of the bind or which of the descriptor bindings can be, uh, can be um, unbounded or variable size. And it has to be the last entry in your set. Um, and so there's a slight difference between this and how it works in DX. In DX, um, there's a namespacing on all the resource types. So you can be unbounded on any of these. And, and it won't care too much, assuming your IHV supports it. Um, Vulkan only lets you do it on the last one. So if you, you know, when you're designing how you want um, resource to be indexed, whether uh, dynamically or not, um, keep this in mind. And uh, this, is, um, this is the part about non-uniform um, indexing. Um, so we established earlier that the array indexing works the same in HL cell for Vulkan and DirectX, um, the lower level mechanics notwithstanding. Uh, and there's some slight differences in the unbounded behavior between um, Vulkan and DirectX, and uh, hopefully having large sets can help you alleviate this. Uh, so when you, if, you, if you want to do non-uniform resource indexing, you will need to enable the feature when you're creating the device, because otherwise um, it won't work. Uh, and and the and each one of the fields um, there's there's each one of the resource types have its own, has its own individual um, field to be toggled. So you can uniform buffers, storage buffers, text buffers, etc. Uh, they all have individual flags that you need to turn on. So uh, maybe the best thing to do is just grab you know whatever you see on your GPU, look at it, and decide like that's the that's the best thing. That, and make sure that you make the decision to turn those on um, or air out if you are using a feature in your shader that isn't supported by the GPU. And so here's a, 
And so non-uniform resource index in HTSL, it works almost, ex or it works the exact same way in DirectX as it does in Vulkan. Um, and, uh, sorry, in Vulkan as it does in DirectX. And it, it's currently only supported in DXC. So here's a very pathological case of uh, what it would look like. Um, I had printed out the Spear V for this, and it, it was actually a lot longer than I thought it would be, and it also looked completely incomprehensible by any reasonable person, so I'll save you from it. But, so here are some things that you um, should take away from this talk for this, this amazing extension. Um, first of all, is you can have much larger descriptor sets, and you know, the, the updating of these descriptors have changed, become a lot more flexible, um, you know, more akin to what you're used to in uh, other APIs and uh, non-uniform resource indexing. And if you're not using that, uh, I'm, there's, you know, that's, that's a very, those are very specific cases of when you would want to use that. And you may not be, you may not need to use that if you don't have a case where you need to index non-uniformly. Are there any questions so far? <laughs> yes. Um, I can't be for certain that it won't happen across the board, but uh, technically there shouldn't be because it hasn't started execution yet. So if you if you bind and you haven't submitted yet, there isn't. I don't I don't see a reason why it would be. Um, but depending on the implementation, there may be some some overhead, but it may be negligible. Any other questions? Hi. Uh, what is the use case of uh, the description indexing? What is, uh, why do we need <laughs> like okay. so let's say you, 65K you, of textures? Um, well, I, I can't tell you why you would need 65K of textures, but let's say you design a, um, uh, a game engine, and um, because of uh, the crazy high refresh monitors, now you want to render um, six frames in flight as opposed to uh, two frames in flight, right? And each one of these has to carry different resources. And so, you know, if you have a, let's say you have some uh, shader that uses 300 or 500 uh, resources per, per call, um, and you want to put this, you, know, you want to use a shader across these multiple frames. Um, and obviously if you want to render objects, you need to segment, you need to segment which frame maps to which level of, of which bin of resources. So it, there's, there, there's not like, there's not a, a pathological case of why you would want to use this necessarily. If you have a, a very high requirement for the types of resources or the number of resources that you want to access at runtime, this, this, is, this is what this enables. Uh, and also, if you have shaders in, um, like compute shaders or picture shaders, where you need to reference resources non-uniformly, um, that means that it's not across, it's not the same across the entire, um, and the, the entire wave. Then, then you would need a non-uniform resource index. Otherwise, the compiler will, or sorry, the compiler will still compile the code, but it, it has unexpected behavior, like you'll get like crazy weird edges, uh, or it just won't render correctly at all. Does that answer your question? If there's any terms that I've used that, that are confusing um, while writing this thing, I realize that there's a lot of them, so I can clarify anything if anybody's interested. I just wanted to add that a common case for us is basically batching multiple draw calls. So you basically, instead of switching uh, pipeline states, uh, often you are, you are, if, if you have the same shader, and the only thing that changes is the resources. You can actually batch those draw calls and then index them. Okay. So all the questions. Okay. So first of all, um, so Vulkan with this extension allows you to have much larger descriptor sets and allows you to have more flexible <laughs> updates. And so this means like updating the descriptors. Uh, are quite a bit of work in Vulkan, right? So Marcus is gonna to talk to us about an extension that reduces some of the pressure and makes it easier to update bulk resources in Vulkan. Mm -hmm.